Hello everyone, I am Miss Karen at Adams Memorial Library. Thank you very much for joining me for October's Bake a Tale. Bake a Tale is the program where we talk about some books and we talk about a recipe and a couple of crafts to go with it. And as always, we have kits available that you can come into the children's room and pick up or you can call and we'll have them ready for you for curbside service. So you can get the kits, you can take the materials, you can get the recipe, and you can follow along with this month's Bake a Tale. So once again, like last month, I'm here with Dandelion Lion and Bryony Bear and doing apples again. So this month, we're kind of talking about apple cider a little bit. Apple cider is delicious to drink on its own, but you can also use it for baking. Um, there's apple cider donuts you can make, apple cider cupcakes, but this month we made apple cider cookies. So they have apples and apple cider in them. And if you like apples and you like cinnamon, then these could be the cookies for you. So we'll talk a little bit about the apple cider cookies, but the crafts are always also apple based. So there are paper apples that you can make. You can make them in different designs given the materials in the kits and also unique to you, apple trees. And the reason it's unique to you is because the trunk of the tree and the branches are your, your hand. And so everybody's is gonna be a little different. So you can make your own unique apple tree. But we also have stories to talk about. And the books that I have to share with you this week are about fall, a little bit about apples. This one is called Fletcher and the Falling Leaves and it was written by Julia Rawlinson and the illustrations are by Tiffany Beek. This is Hurry, Hurry, Mary, Dear. Poor Mary is very, very, very busy in the fall. Hurry, Hurry, Mary, Dear was written by N. M. Bodiger and the illustrations are by Eric Blegvad. And this last one, you might remember this is one of my favorites. It's Apple Cake, A Recipe for Love. And the words and the illustrations are by Julie Pashkis. Well, in Fletcher and the Falling Leaves, poor Fletcher, the fox is very, very, very concerned because he has noticed that the trees are losing their leaves and he's really worried about them. He doesn't know if it hurts. He's trying to attach the leaves back on, but no matter what he does, the leaves keep coming down. So Fletcher finds out a little bit more about fall and finds out whether it's okay for those trees to lose their leaves. Now in this book, I told you, oh, poor Mary. Oh, she's just exhausted. She is so tired with all the stuff she has to do in fall because she's trying to get ready for winter. And somebody is saying to her, hurry, hurry, Mary dear, falls over, winter's here. Uh-oh, so this is at the end of fall. All the things that she has to do, there's gonna be snow coming. So you have to pick the apples and then she can make apple cookies or something else good, but she has to pick the apples, dill the pickles, chop down trees for wooden nickels, dig the turnips, split the peas, cook molasses, curdle cheese. Oh, she's got so much to do and she just gets more and more and more tired. And does she ever get any help? Well, you check this book out from the library. Hurry, hurry, Mary, dear. You can find out what happens to poor Mary. And in this last book, Apple Cake, oh, Alfonso is trying to win the heart of someone he knows. And he decides a lot of things aren't working, but it'll certainly, certainly work, don't you think? to make her a yummy treat with apples. And in this case, it's apple cake, but I think if he made her these apple cookies, I think that would work too. So um, if you continue to join me, we'll talk a little bit more about the recipes and I'll tell you about the crafts for this time. 
Now, as always, friends, when baking, it's more fun to bake with a friend. So an adult is needed to make these cookies because, you know, they're cookies. They need to bake in the oven, but also there are apples to chop up. So if you need a little help using the knife and chopping, best to bake with a friend, bake with an adult. Now, these apple cider cookies, uh, if you don't have apple cider, you could use apple juice too, and that would, that would still work. They're, when I made them, they're very cakey. It could be because I did try to substitute some oil for some of the butter, so they're very cakey. They've got a glaze on that has some apple cider in and some cinnamon, so it's so like kind of like a little bit of an apple pie. They're yummy, and I don't know if you can see in here, I read somewhere that a professional baker said she didn't peel the apples, so I didn't peel mine either. So you can see a little bit, it still has the red peel on. And that didn't really make any of a difference, but I think it looks I think it looks kind of pretty to have the little flecks of red in. So you can peel the apples or not, it's up to you. But it's a pretty straightforward recipe. You just mix it up, bake the cookies, have some apple juice or apple cider, have some apples in it. If you, there's nutmeg and cinnamon in here. If you don't like the nutmeg, you don't have to put it in. It's up to you. You can make it however you'd like. And then maybe you'd like to have them with a glass of apple cider or warm apple cider, or you can always enjoy them with a friend. For the crafts in the kit, there's going to be sort of an assortment of papers, some red, green, there's even a little bit of pink in case you want to add some pink to your, to your apples. There's red paper that's regular copy paper, and there's also some red construction paper. And there will also be green construction paper and brown. And that should be all you would need to make the crafts. So you can kind of mix, mix and match if you'd um, rather use the brown for something else, that is okay. But if you would like to use the brown for the trunk of your one-of-a-kind apple tree, take the brown paper and you will trace your hand on it, you know, part of your wrist, because it's a little bit hard to see, but that's, that's my hand on there underneath all these leaves and apples. Cut that out first and then you can glue it on the cardstock that will be in the kit. There will also be some book pages in the kit from some from old books. And that's what you'll use to make the leaves. Now I took these pages and folded it up. It's a long page and I folded it like this and used the template that's in the kit. If you can draw leaves and apples without needing the template, that is great. If you're like me and you kind of need something to look at or something to cut out, you can use the template and then you can choose what size leaves you want. So you can use bigger ones and they're gonna be easier to cut out. You can use the smaller ones or the medium ones. I used medium and small on this picture. But the leaves are what these book pages are for. So I folded my page up and then put the small template here and cut up some leaves. And then I put the medium template here. You can see where I cut up the leaves, cut out the leaves. I folded it because that way I didn't have to cut the leaves out one at a time. The way I folded it, I had um, several leaves of each. And that way I only had to cut them out a few at a time instead of doing all the leaves one at a time, which would take a really long time. So that's my word of advice. If you fold up the, pa the paper, you can cut more leaves up at once. And I had three pages here and I, used it, I could cut them out all together. So if you need a little help cutting, you can ask an adult to cut too. Uh, if you wanna cut them out individually, that's okay. If you wanna trace the shapes however you want, that's okay too. There, on the template, there is also an apple shape. And I did the same thing with some red construction paper. I folded that up too, traced some apples on it, and then cut out, uh, I think I had 16 apples on here, which is a lot. So you can decide how many apples you'd like on your tree. 
But once you have the leaves cut out, there will also be a little bit of green, green paint in your kit and a paintbrush. So if you would like, you can paint your, your leaves green. If you have green crayons or green markers or something, if you'd rather use those, that's fine too. I watered down the paint a little bit. I had some water and I put some water on my paintbrush and then used the green paint. If you want it to be darker, you can use more green paint. It's up to you, however you would like the leaves to go. So once you've cut out your leaves, put something down so you don't get paint everywhere and then put the leaves down and you can paint on them. Anyway, it doesn't have to be, you know, it doesn't have to be perfect. There's just gonna be the leaves on here. So just give them a little touch of green if you would like, let them dry. Then once they're dry, after you've glued your handprint tree trunk on here, you can just glue the leaves on top and then glue the apples on top of that. Easy peasy. It's however you would like your design to go. As I said, this is going to be one of a kind and unique to you. You can also use some of the paper for these 3D apples. If you're going to use paper, this kind of paper, it depends. You can decide how wide you want it to be. This is one inch wide. This one is three quarters of an inch and this one is half an inch. So I used a lot of strips for this one. So there are a few paper, pieces of paper in here so you can experiment a little bit and have some strips and decide what you'd like to do. My advice on this is to make sure that your strips aren't the whole length because when if you do that, this is 11 inches by eight and a half. If you make it 11 inches, then it looks less like an apple and more like a pumpkin with the bigger shape. So it looks kind of like a red pumpkin. And if that's what you want to do, that is fine. That absolutely works. If you want them to be a little bit more compact, more like an apple, then you can cut the paper in half, do it that way, or you can cut the strips and cut the strips in half. So uh, I believe one of these is six inches. Some of them are five and a half inches. If you're doing five and a half, then you get probably two apples from a piece of paper like this. Once you've got the, the strips the way you want, you're going to put some holes in them. And if you have a paper punch, it'll be a little bit easier, but if you don't have one, you can carefully poke holes through. Um, if you have a toothpick at home, you can use something like that. But also in the kit will be brass fasteners. And I'm not sure what I did with my brass fastener here, but I will just tell you this is a brass fastener at the top and the bottom. And if you can see, this side is the top of the brass fastener, but on the bottom, this is the bottom of the brass fastener and the top is on the inside. I thought they stood up a little bit better if you had the flat part on the bottom. But once you will do, once you have your strips, you can decide how many you'd like. This one has fewer, this one has more. So the more strips you have, the closer together, the more solid the apple will look. But once you've cut your strips, you will need to make a hole at the top and the bottom of the strips. Like this, and then you will cut another one like that at the bottom. And however many strips you're going to use, you want to line them up so the holes are gonna more or less match. And then you can take the brass, oh, here it is. Take your brass fastener, put it through all the strips, however many you're using. And if you're adding a leaf, you can put that down first. You can cut the leaf like this out of construction paper. You can cut it out of another color of paper. Does this one I used pink leaves on my green apple. You can mix and match however you would like, but you can cut the leaf out. If you're using a leaf, you can put that down first and then put all your strips, attach those behind. 
and then close the fastener, which you do just by bending down both ends to hold it together. And then you will use the other brass fastener. There's going to be, um, not sure, eight or 10 in your kit. So you can make several apples. Each apple needs two brass fasteners. When you have the top ready, you'll bend these down and fold them again. You'll have holes in the bottom. You'll fold them like that and then attach another brass fastener at the bottom. And then you can kind of straighten it out. Just straighten the papers out a little bit, the strips out and give it a nice apple shape. And that's all you do to make your apples. You can use them for fall decorations. So friends, if you'd like to come and get your kit, come on down to the children's room. If you're not able to come in, if, but you would still like the instructions or the recipe, you can always email at kids at adamslib.org and I'd be happy to send those out to you. And I hope you will enjoy your apple crafts and your apple cider cookies. Thank you very much for watching friends and I'll see you again next month with another recipe to try and some more books to read. Thank you, bye-bye.